video piracy is not a victimless crime. Illegal downloads and torrents rob the artists of being able to do what they want to do, and that's to afford to bring you awesome creative entertainment. Support these artists by buying their music and their movies. And support physical media, because you never know when your cloud or hard drive is going to flatline. Magistro back in the mad lab. Good to be back here after that idiot said that we had a hundred thousand subscribers. No, we have over a thousand subscribers. That's the first headstone hurdle that we got over. So thank you very much for the thousand subscribers. Thousand plus now. Thank you. Anyways, uh, I was out. I went to the blood bank. Uh, I had to go uh, picked up some condoms for me and my girlfriend. We're having a date night soon. Unfortunately, it's still too small. Anyways, what we're going to talk about tonight is a little bit about Terrifier 2. Now, it's been delayed, unfortunately, but what this is what happens when you have a pandemic. I'm going to talk a little bit about the first Terrifier as well as Terrifier 2 and uh, a little bit of information that surrounds that right now, just to kind of keep you entertained into 2021 when the movie will come out. Yes. So, first of all, I would like to congratulate David Howard Thornton because he, of Art the Clown fame, the actor, has landed another job in horror movies. He's gonna play a character in this new whodunit slasher coming out called Time's Up, which takes place on New Year's Eve. And the slasher killer is dressed like Father Time. So congratulations, David, on getting work during these troubled times. Work is work. I'm so happy for you. And we can't wait to see you as our clown and Terrifier 2. Now, something that I wanted to bring up that happens in Terrifier 1 is there's a big debate about whether or not Art broke some rules. There is a scene where Art pulls a gun where he shoots and kills the main heroine. Now some people are like, oh, he broke rules. He used a gun. He didn't use a knife. Personally, I don't care that he used a gun. Actually, it's smart. If a slasher person has a gun on them, the problem is, is that guns in real life are very scary. They stop you right in your tracks, you're dead. On screen, they're kind of boring because, yes, uh, Art fired an entire clip into this woman's head and it produced some big holes in that, but it's still not that visually interesting. Plus, the problem is, is that this was about halfway through the movie and we had been following this lead female character all this time and we thought that she was going to be the final girl but what happens is that she gets killed dead and then her sister takes over as the final girl the problem is is that this was a low budget movie and Damien Ligoni who is the director and writer of this he did a great job with this. Jenna Cannell, who was playing the lead actress, she did a fantastic job. But they're not Wes Craven, and they're not Alfred Hitchcock. He was trying to pull an Alfred Hitchcock uh, psycho move, or a scream Drew Barrymore move, uh, as far as like killing the lead off and giving you a shocking surprise. The problem with it is, is that he's not quite yet Alfred Hitchcock or Wes Craven. So, and Jenna Cannell, great actress that she is, she's not uh, Drew Barrymore and she's not Janet Lee, Not yet, anyways. So, we're invested in this character and then you killed her off and it's not like, that was a surprise. It was like, you just killed the momentum of your movie and now you've got to start from square one. So... Uh, please don't take this as a huge criticism. I am a huge fan 
big fan, big fan of Terrifier. It's just that I didn't mind the gun so much, but it started kind of like from ground zero with getting the momentum back. So I hope this is something that he uh, took as a lesson and improved upon and we won't see this kind of what could be construed as a mistake again. Other things about Terrifier 2. Now more information has come out since uh, idiot boy uh, Rob uh, did his little shindig on uh, Terrifier 2. Um, basically they did a lot of shooting at a place called the Fright Factory in Pennsylvania. And Damien Leone said something about it was his idea of what hell looked like. Now based on the stills that I've seen, hell has got a bunch of filing cabinets in it and old desks and stuff. I'm not quite sure. I, I still think that the, the final showdown that's taking place takes place in a haunt like the Fright Factory. Maybe it's not called that, it's called something else. But does it stand in for hell or does it stand in for the haunt? And we're just going to have to find out. We're going to have to wait and find out to see exactly what's going on there. And um, Samantha Scafidi is back as Victoria, the mutilated woman that we saw in Terrifier. But she only just recently got her face cast or whatever and makeup and this and that. So she wasn't part of the shooting way back when. So is she part of the climax, does that mean? Because they've still got some, some shooting to do. So that'll be interesting to find out. Uh, but I, she may not be in like the nightclub part of it anymore. Like we thought that she might have been. She may be in the hell category. Thanks for tuning in to watch this review. If you enjoy this video, give us a like and subscribe. Also, consider becoming a Patreon member for more perks and content. Links below.